Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in the world. This is Gloria White, and I'm coming to you from Utah, USA. Today I'm in chapter 14 in the book of Acts, in the New Testament, in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. And the book of Acts are all the things that the um, apostles and the disciples did after Christ ascended into heaven. So today we're in chapter 14, but the previous chapters are down there in the list of videos if you'd like to go and catch up on those. Or if you're already caught up, here we go on. Chapter 14. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of, also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren, or um, made their souls bitter or angry. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault, or um, a violent attempt, made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers, to use them despitefully, or to abuse them, and to stone them, they were aware of it, or or they were um, they became aware of it and fled unto Lister and Derby, cities of Laco uh, Lacoania, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, or, you know, paralyzed in his feet, or without strength in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak, who... who, Paul, steadfastly, intently, beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet, and be, and he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their ver voices, saying in the speech of Lycaonia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they call Barnabas Jupiter, or, let's see, Jupiter or Zeus. And Paul, Mercurius, or Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, or Zeus, which was before their city, or whose temple was in their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes, they tore their clothes, they're like, oh no, don't do it, and ran in among the people crying out, and saying, sirs, why do ye these things? We are also we are also men of of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from your these vanities or idols unto the living God vanities, useless things, and turn unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein, who in times or past generations suffered all nations or allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless he, le nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, and that he did good, 
and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasonings, seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce, or they could scarcely restrain, uh, restrain, they the rest and with these sayings scarce re restrained or they could scarcely restrain they the people um the multitudes that they had not done sacrifice unto them to keep them from sacrificing to them they thought they were some kind of gods zeus and and, and from jupiter and mercurius um, Hermes, and they were going to do a sacrifice to them like they were some kind of God. And Paul and Barnabas were like out of their brains, shocked. Are you kidding me? No, no, don't do this thing. You know, here they are preaching the word of God. And these people are um, treating them like they're false idols. And Paul and Barnabas are about to have a heart attack. And there came, and, 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 um, and there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. And they dragged him out of the city. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. I need to stop for a friend who has asked a question, is this a test? Is this just a test? We are in a spiritual battle. The battle that started in heaven when Satan tried to overthrow God and sit on his throne continues here on earth. We are in a test. It's a spiritual battle though. Good versus evil. Men are not gods. Only God is a God. And Satan was an angel. He was actually a cherubim. He was created to guard the mercy seat that God sits on. And God made him beautiful. He really made him very, very beautiful. Let me look up the scripture. One second. Okay. In the book of Ezekiel, in chapter 28, verse, um, let's see. Okay, let's start in verse 10. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God. Now this is God describing Satan. Satan is the king of Tyrus. Okay, he's Tyrus. Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest, or were seal, the seal of perfection. Thou sealeth up the sum, full of wisdom, wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden in the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, and the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, 
the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, which is like uh, turquoise, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets, or hair, and of thy pipes, or the, his voice, was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherubim that covereth, and I set thee, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee till he became proud and tried to overthrow God. By the multitude of thy merchandise, or um, trading, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness or beauty or splendor. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic or trading, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Satan was created by God, he made him beautiful. He covered him in precious stones. He gave him beautiful hair. He gave him a beautiful voice. And he became proud. And he tried to take the throne of God away from God. That's where the war started. That's when the battle between good and evil began. Then, God's angels, Michael his archangel, and two-thirds of the angels fought against Satan, and a third of the angels that he drew away from God with him had a great battle in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels, and Michael and his angels threw Satan and his angels out of heaven. In Revelations uh, chapter 12, when it talks about the third of the stars falling from heaven, those are the third of the angels that were thrown from heaven because they joined themselves to Satan who tried to overthrow God. So, it is a battle. It is a battle between good and evil. And God wants to know, whose side are you on? And he's not persecuting anyone. God does not persecute his children. He loves them. But Satan and his followers will try to get to us. It is Satan's goal to steal away souls from God. Just like he drew a third of the angels, he is after you and me. He is on this earth in spirit. And we have been given by God power over the evil, over the devil, we can say, in Jesus' name, I command you to go back from hence you came. And they have to leave us alone. Some, 
you have to pray and fast for three days in order to gain enough power to expel them. But you can, because they gave, God gave us that power. Through Jesus Christ, we have that power. We have power over Satan. But you have to decide. Are you going to stand with God? Or are you going to stand with Satan? There's no other choices. Just that. Two choices. God or Satan. And so, when you ask me, God allows his followers to be hurt or suffer? God is no respecter of persons. Doesn't matter what social status you hold, what position or occupation you have. God respects no person. So he treats us all the same. But we have also armor, Christian armor. Hold on a second, I'll get that for you. Now, we have power over demons and Satan. And, let me get my magnifying glass. And in Ephesians chapter 6, and we'll start in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, or um, his uh, schemes. He's always scheming. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world or this age, this, this generation that we're in, against spiritual wickedness in high places or spiritual host of high places. Wherefore, Take unto you, or gird yourself, that means wrap it around you, gird yourself, gird unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked or Satan and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery or the hidden truth of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds or chains that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Titrius, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make all things known unto you, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, 
that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ. In sincerity, amen. That's the armor of God. And if you need me to explain that and go in depth for, for you for that, I will. But yes, we are at war. It is a test of your spirit your, for your soul. Christ said, if you save your life, you will lose it. If you lose your life, you'll save it. What he meant was, if you were to die for Christ, be persecuted unto death, and not turn away from God, you may live, lose your mortal life but you will preserve your soul. So he who loses his life will save it. He who saves his life, his mortal body, will lose his soul. It's a war. We're in a spiritual battle. It is a test. It's not just a It is the test, a test of your faith. Think about this. I'm trying to think of ways to put it to you so that you can grasp it and put it in your heart. The Knights of the Round Table they swore their allegiance to the king, and they would die for the king, and they would do what the king asked of them, even unto death. So it is with the Lord our God. We serve a mighty God. And so if you think about yourself as being a knight of the round table and you have sworn your allegiance to the king, which Jesus Christ is king of kings and lord of lords, then you will stand for him. You will not let anything in this world pull you away from him. And God has said, Whatever is in his hand, nothing can snatch it away from him. But you can leave if you choose. And that's where we are. I hope I haven't confused you further. I hope I've tried I've tried very hard to clarify to you the meaning of being a servant of God, that he is our Lord and Savior, that he is King of kings and Lord of lords, and what it would require of you is unwavering faith and belief in him. And um, the ruler of this world is Satan. And he will do all sorts of things to try to deceive us, to try to pull us away from God. He's a great liar. He's a liar and a murderer from the beginning. So, choose wisely. And then stand by your decision. I love you.